Today we're going to speak about three things that no one ever speaks about when it comes to property investing and understanding these three fundamentals. Now you've probably never heard of someone speak about this on a podcast or YouTube videos or maybe even books. This is something that people do not take in consideration and this is why the majority of Australian investors aren't successful. Just statistics do not lie. 0.4% of Australian investors don't own more than three investment properties because this has a part to play and they're understanding this. Now, a lot of people just will do things and follow the herd and listen to other people that probably aren't successful in certain areas. So today I'm going to show you this, or tell you these three things that's gonna help you be a better investor. Okay, tip number one. Tip number one is the five year boom window. Now, a lot of people will invest in the property market and what they'll do, they'll buy a lot of investments in their own backyard. And you've probably heard people say, do not invest in your own backyard. If you go and invest in your, in, your, in your own backyard, you're probably gonna be making a mistake. And why people say that is because you do not know where that growth market's at. You might be seeing, living in a particular location and you're seeing the markets just climbing. And maybe you've lost time of when this market started to climb, but all you know, it might be year four, it might be year five, or you don't even know where it's at and you just buy in. And then what happens is there can be a slowdown in the market. Why? Because it's a five year boom window. Particularly every location in Australia will have a five to seven year boom window. This is if it's running off certain fundamentals which we use as you know infrastructure projects, job creation, etc. So if you've done your research and you know what's going on, there's gonna be a five year boom window. Now that five years, you wanna get in that year one and you wanna ride that wave of capital growth. What people will do, they might get in there at year two, three or four, and they've missed out on that solid growth. Now with that five, five to seven year boom window can be, it's gonna be double digit growth if you've done the right analysis. That double digit growth is gonna help you propel you moving forward with your property journey. Why? Your property will grow in value. You can use the equity and use that equity to go buy other investments or use it for materialistic goods, okay? But that five year boom window is something to understand because Every state, every territory, every market starts their growth, their growth phase at different times. You know, there's markets in markets. You might have certain suburbs in the, same, in the same council area, they start their growth phase at different times. If you can do your analysis and make sure you get in at the right time, that's gonna help you for your property portfolio. And this is why you wanna diversify, not just buy all in the same state and territory because every market will have their different times of growth. And there'll be some markets that might have had something steady, steady, little growth. And then all of a sudden, it's just, you're seeing it moving forward. You know, Hobart and, and Brisbane at the moment, yeah, they're great examples. And that's just, a, that's just a big market. There's all markets inside Hobart and Brisbane. But there's, they've had actually no, not significant growth in the last, you know, 10 years compared to Sydney and Melbourne. So they've started their growth rates at different times in Sydney and Melbourne. Even though Melbourne and Sydney, their markets are doing pretty well now, They've actually, they're in different growth phases. So this is something to take in consideration. If you can understand the growth phase, you can understand where it's at. If it's in year one, or if it's in year, you know, in that first year alone, you get into that market, ride the wave of capital growth. You don't want to get in there a second or third year. You want to get in a year one because you're costing yourself, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So keep that in mind. Number two, land tax concessions. Every state and territory have different land tax laws. For instance, you buy investment property in Victoria. From day one, you're gonna be paying land tax. Hypothetically, let's say you purchase another investment property in Queensland. In Queensland, there is a land tax law. If, you, if the land is no greater than 600, the land is no greater than 600. So what, no, I'm not talking about the whole asset. I'm talking about the land value. If the land is not greater than $600,000 worth, you do not have to pay any land tax. So this saves you, you know, hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars over a long period of time. For instance, as well, let's say you purchase investment properties in a trust. If you purchase investment properties in a trust, different states and territories have different laws for purchasing investment properties in trusts. So that's something to take in consideration, speak to your tax agent. If you're, not, if you're investing in an interstate market and your tax agent from, a, in, say, from Victoria and you want to invest in Sydney, um, or New South Wales, I should say, speak to a accountant in New South Wales and they, they can tell you there's laws as well. Something to, that's something to, that's important to understand because if you invest all in one state, you can be paying tens of thousands of dollars in land tax. So this is how you minimize that, that problem. 
Number three is probably one of the most important, which is why I left it best to last, because people do not take this into consideration. This is something you gotta open up your mind and think outside the square. When you're investing in a different uh, location, every location or LGA, I should say, which is a local government area, have different economic drivers. So what I mean by that, there is different things driving that economy, industries, what industries are driving that economy? For instance, let's say Port Hedland, which is a famous mining town in, in WA, that is driven purely on mining. So if something happens to mining, that property market is going to plummet, which it has in the past. So when you're investing in a location, you wanna have at least five, five or more economic drivers driving that location. Looking at this from ABS data, something to take in consideration. What is driving the market? So you might look at a location and you've done your research and analysis and you know there's agriculture driving this market, um, administration, retail, healthcare, education system. So those five industries are driving that market. And that's something you, you take you take that and you compare that to the state average that you're looking at that prop that location in. So if that property is that is a, is a sum a location in say WA, compare that to the WA state, you know, fundamentals. And so that's something to take in consideration. And why we do this because if you buy all your properties in one location, there's five drivers driving that that property, which is a good thing. But not just that, when there is recessions, when there is a downturn in the market, which you have seen in the past, when mining collapses, what happens? Those property markets in those mining towns collapse. When COVID hits, you know, you've seen retail, you've seen hospitality, you've seen those, you've seen those industries dropped and that can have an effect on the property market if it's purely on a retail hospitality location, which is very rare. But you want to make sure that you're, you're investing in locations that have different drivers. So you might invest in one property that has been, it's rich in agriculture, rich in mining, construction, you know, um, logistics and transportation, and maybe healthcare. Then you've got another location that's driven by healthcare and the education system, retail, maybe um, arts and services, maybe, you know, logistics and, uh, you know, transportation. So it's got different economic drivers. This is what's help, helping and driving those markets. And so when you do that and something happens to the property market, not every property location in Australia is going to plummet at the same time. You know, history does not lie. If you look at when there has been recessions in Australia, those other property markets have not all plummeted at the same time. Some have actually blossomed, some have actually improved, some haven't. So this is something you take in consideration because that's gonna make all the difference in your portfolio. When you have a number of properties in different locations, different areas, you're gonna be minimizing your, your risk of your five year boom window, which is gonna help you propel you moving forward. You're gonna minimize your risk of, you know, or paying too much in land tax. And of course, you're gonna minimize your risk of the property crashing if there was a recession because you're looking at these five economic drivers. Take that, take these three tips and use them or educate yourself and understand what is driving those markets, understand about the tax law concessions, understand where the property is in its growth phase or that location is in its growth phase. By doing this, this will make you a better investor. Understanding property. Property is not something simple. There's a lot of jigsaw pieces, puzzles, uh, jigsaw pieces to the puzzle. And this is one of them. And this is something that doesn't get spoken about. So understand this and learn this, and this will make you a better investor.